This is the QKZ HBB. It's a $20 IEM from QKZ that has just one job, to be better than the 7 Hertz Zero. Welcome to What's New. This is the QKZ HBB. It's a $20 IEM that certainly feels a little bit more premium than the price would suggest. Now, I'm not entirely sure about that lightning decal on the side. That looks a little bit cheap to me, but it's got this nice blackened smoky plastic with all the insides in this dull gold that just, it looks really delicious and certainly a lot better than the other tacky black and gold implementations that we've seen from certain other IEM manufacturers. Combine that with a thick and solid plastic that's used for the build and you've got something that certainly feels a lot more premium. Certainly a very satisfying thing to hold than a $20 IEM would suggest. Now the wire on the other hand does feel a little cheap which is to be expected, something's got to give at this price point, but does come with an inline microphone, unlike the 7 Hz Zero. And at the end of the day, if you don't like it, you can just change the wire. Now, one of the things that bugged me about the 7 Hz Zero is the nozzle width. Coming in at somewhere around five, five and a half millimeters, this tended to be a little bit uncomfortable in the ear, and I know a lot of people have complained of the same. And the effect of that is not just comfort, it's also frequency response. If you've got something that doesn't fit quite that snug and it slowly slips out, you're basically losing bass response amongst other things. That's not a good thing. The HBB on the other hand has a slightly narrower nozzle and I found this to be A, far more comfortable and B, well, a far better fit, more consistent fit. Uh, because of which I think this is the better wearing I am for my ears at least. But none of that matters. You could just use thinner tips on the 700Z though, right? The question is, how does it sound? And does it hold up to the reigning king? And the answer, is no, no it does not. See, there are some good things about this. The upper mids, for example, where the 7 Hz Zero was a little thinner, a little sharper sounding between three and six kilohertz, this, well, this sounds a little more lush and rich because, well, it's just not that sharp. As a result, I like the sound of the upper mids on this far more than I do on the 7 Hz Zero. I still would prefer just a little bit more presence in the one to two kilohertz region, if I'm being honest. But even in treble extension, I really didn't mind the zero. I like the way the zero sounds in terms of treble extension. This one gives you a slightly darker feel, which for longer listening sessions, I certainly don't mind. I like my treble to be just a smidge on the darker side, purely personal preference. Overall, both of them are very good, just slightly different flavors. What ruins the QKZ HBB for me though is the bass and the lower mids. It's got that typical bass response that is very ambitious and bleeds right into the mids. The problem is when you've got a $20 IEM with the drivers that you can fit into a $20 IEM, the resulting mud just lacks in a very mushy, distorted, not at all detailed listening experience. And that, well, that doesn't sit well. It's fine if you're listening to pop and EDM and just chart topping hip hop all day. But if you listen to something with more things going on in the track, then, well, it quickly falls apart. It really does sound like an absolute mess in the low end. And that's it, right? That's the review right there. I can stop it right there and say the 7 Hz Zero is clearly better, but I decided to explore things just a little bit more. Something about the HBB struck me as really nice, those upper mids and highs perhaps. And I wanted to see what I could do with EQ. And I know that's unfair, you're right, Bear with me for a minute. Now, given that they're the same price point and they're probably running components that are fairly budget, I thought, why not try and EQ this to the 7 Hz Zero? And I did exactly that. I plugged it in, played my favorite music again, and lo and behold, the HBB came alive. My God, things opened up. Suddenly there was nice, thick, lush mid bass, really meaty, really punchy kick drums. But in the low end, you had a lot of sub bass rumble, but with more detail than I'd noticed before. Plus, none of that was interfering with the lower mids. So now you had really clean vocals and guitars with just a little bit of warmth, which I happen to quite like. Very much like the 7 Hz Zero actually, but because I left the upper mids and the treble alone, I still got that nice lush upper mid vocals, female vocals, and a slightly darker treble signature. Overall then, the result was stunning. I was left just listening to it for a while. I didn't even bother about the review bit. And that is exactly the sort of thing you want out of this. Now you might say, how is any of this relevant? Anything can be EQ'd to sound like anything else. How is that, how does that make a review? I agree, 
absolutely i don't think a review should take into account eq but there's a point i'm trying to make here see when i tried to eq the 7 hertz to have a little more bass it wouldn't do it it just wouldn't take that eq the driver would just sort of give up but when i tried to bring this down from where it was the bass shelf well, this gave me much better results, the kind of results I think a lot of people would rather have from the 7 Hz Zero. And that was interesting to me. I don't know what drivers are in here, but whatever it is, and however they've made it, it seems to be capable of a little more bass, a little more punch in the mid bass, a little more presence in the sub bass, while still, with EQ of course, keeping those mids nice and clear. You see, the reason the 7 Hz Zero is so damn amazing is because it's been tuned really carefully but keeping in mind its own limitations. And in that respect, the QKZ HPB unfortunately is exactly the opposite. It's been tuned completely ignoring its own limitations and the result, well, it's a bit of a mess. And that extends when you're going beyond music. Imagine watching a movie with a lot of action, a lot of things going on at the same time, a lot of bass and explosions and things. Well, this one completely falls apart. At least the 7 Hz Zero still sounds clean, although neither of them are particularly great at layering. So if there's a lot going on, they both lose their composure. So for gaming, for instance, if you're playing the new Call of Duty and there's a lot of explosions going on, then they both will kind of lose their composure. But any other game with a little bit less going on where you need a little more positional audio, while this could have been good, that bass response with the muddying mids, it just isn't. It's overpowering and it's just not balanced. The 7 Hz Zero, miles ahead in every single application. So I can easily say with confidence that today, the 7 Hz Zero remains the absolute king of the $20 price point where the QKZ HBB is what could have been, but ultimately wasn't. Yeah. What can I say? Maybe they'll get it right the next time. And maybe you'll join me next time for the next video. I've got the Focal Bathys, some impressions on that. I've got a new Razer gaming headset, my first Razer gaming headset, that should be interesting. And a couple of other projects that I'd rather not say until it's fully baked. So maybe hit that subscribe button and hopefully I see you in the next one. Till next time, stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful, namaste.